friends, my name is teacher Erica, and today for Let's Find Out About It's second implementation, we are going to be learning about the post office. And more specifically, we're going to be learning about the journey that mail takes from the person who sends the mail to the person who receives the mail or to the mail's destination. So last time in Let's Find Out About It first implementation, you guys learned a lot about envelopes and mail. Today we are going to be learning about how that mail gets from one place to another. So as my friends might notice, I have my mail carrier hat on. This is the logo. It says United States Postal Service. And that is the postal service we use here in the US. So my friends, since we're going to be learning about the journey that mail takes from one person to another person or from one location to its destination, let's talk about our book that we read this week. We read Dear Juno, right friends? And in this book, Juno's grandmother was the first person to send a letter to Juno. So she sent him a letter from her house all the way in Korea, which I'll show you guys a picture right here of how far Korea is from the United States. So she had to send a letter all the way from way over there, all the way to the US where Juno lived. And so Juno's house in the United States was the destination for the letter that his grandma sent. And so a destination, my friends, is a place that something goes to. So the letter, for example, like I said, the destination was the United States. And the person who sends the letter, so Juno's grandma, is a sender. Also, since Juno's house was the destination, Juno, since he's a person, he was the recipient. And the recipient is a person that receives something. It doesn't just have to be a letter, but in this case, since we're talking about the mail, it was the letter that his grandma sent him. So that's what he received, and that's why Juno was the recipient. So now my friends, I'm gonna show you a type of mail that you can send. It's not like this envelope right here, nor is it like either of the envelopes that Juno's grandma or Juno sent to each other in the book we read, but it's a special type of mail that you don't need an envelope for and you can just send it like it is. So this is a postcard that I wrote a while ago. My friends can see the date up here. It says 3-3-21, which means March 3rd, 2021. So we put the month, the day, and the year on the date. And then you also put um, on your postcard, you put a message. So I put, I miss you a lot. I hope you're doing well. I love you and happy Easter. Cause this was supposed to get sent out before Easter, but I never put a stamp on it. So I was never able to send it out. But now if my friends look, I have a stamp on it. So now after this video, I can go send it and put it in the mailbox. So that way it can go to its destination. And then lastly, I have the name of the recipient. So the person who's gonna receive my postcard and then I have her address, her zip code, the state she lives in and the country. So this stands for California and this stands for United States of America. It says USA. So this my friends is a postcard. My friends can see it's just a piece of paper on the front and back. On the front I decorated it. I'll show you a picture of it right here. It has a rainbow on it and it has some hearts and then it says hello from California. And this is the postcard I made. You don't have to buy postcards from the store, as you can tell, I made mine. But if you did wanna buy a postcard, you could totally do that too. My friends might have noticed that I wrote Happy Easter on my postcard. And Easter was a while ago, but here's the thing. I didn't put a stamp on my postcard, so I wasn't able to send it before Easter. Um, it's okay, I went and saw my Nina anyways, which is the person I was sending it to. But still, it would have been nice to send it off, right? So my friends, whenever you are sending a piece of mail, if it's a postcard, an envelope, a package, you do need a stamp. But on big packages like this box, the stamp is like this. So yeah, my friends, this is a special type of stamp, uh, also called a packing slip. And you put this on really big boxes because if you were to use these little stamps, you would need a lot of stamps to be able to send this anywhere. Do my friends know that once I put this stamp on my postcard, do you guys know where I would put this postcard for it to get delivered to my Nina? Great job, friends. That's right. I would need to put this in the mailbox. So now, my friends, we are going to talk about 
how your mail gets from your mailbox at your home to the mailbox of the destination that you're sending it to. So I'm going to scoot over a little bit and I'm going to show you guys pictures of the process of how mail gets from one place to its destination. So how mail gets from the sender to the recipient. So as my friends just told me, you put your mail in the mailbox. So this is a picture of a mailbox. It can look like this or it can look like this. There's different types of mailboxes, my friends. Uh, you can put your mail in the mailbox and once you put your mail in the mailbox, it then gets picked up by a mail carrier. And this is a mail carrier. So a mail carrier is a person who comes and picks up your mail and then they take it to the post office. This is the post office. And then from the post, this is a long journey, my friends, so stay with me. And then from the post office, your mail gets taken to a mail center. And in the mail center, they have these special machines that look like this. And these machines sort your mail. So when you sort your mail, that means they organize it by where it's going. So if some mail is going to Texas, they're going to organize all that mail into one big, big, big pile. And these machines do it because they'll get it done very, very fast. And the way that these machines sort your mail is by the barcodes that are on the mail. Like this box I showed you guys a second ago, you guys see this barcode? There's one, two, there's one right here, there's another one, and there's another one. There's all sorts of barcodes. And these barcodes mean that this big, big box was sent to a bunch of different places before it ultimately reached its final destination, which was my house. And lastly, my friends, once the machines sort the mail from their barcodes on the mail, then the mail is able to get sent to the final destination. So now, my friends, before the mail gets to its final destination, it needs to get there by, again, a mail carrier. So a mail carrier is going to, a mail carrier is going to deliver the mail to its final destination. And when we deliver something, that means we take something from one place to another. So in this case, the mail carrier is taking the mail from the post office where it has arrived to its final destination, which could be a business, a house, an apartment, anything. And my friends see this truck right here? This is a special type of truck called a mail truck. And this is what mail carriers use to drive around town to bring mail to houses and buildings and anywhere else that the mail needs to go to. So the mail's final destination. But the mail doesn't just have to travel by truck. It can also travel by van, by airplane, even by train. So in the book we read, Dear Juno, my friends can see that the envelope that Juno's grandma sent him has these little red and blue stripes. That means that it had to travel a long, long ways and that it also traveled by airplane. So mail can travel any of those ways, my friends. And as long as it gets to its final destination, that's all that matters. Alright friends, so now we are going to do a sorting mail activity. So we are going to be mailmen and we are going to sort these different color envelopes that I have here and see if they go in the yellow, in the blue, or in the pink section. And remember friends, for in order for us to sort our mail into these sections, that means that they're going to get sent off to their destinations. But for them to do that, they have to have a, they have to meet some requirements. So they need to have a stamp and an address for its destination. Because if we don't know where the envelope's going, we can't send it. And if we do know where the envelope's going, but there's no stamp, we still can't send it because that means it's not paid for. And so we have to return it to the sender. So are you guys ready to be mail carriers with me and help me put all this mail away? Because I need a lot of help. You guys ready? Awesome, let's go friends. So we're gonna go one at a time. I have this envelope. So first of all, what color do my friends think? Where do you guys think this is gonna go? Blue, yellow, or pink? Exactly friends, this is gonna go in the pink color. But first we need to look at the back and see if it meets all our requirements. So do my friends see a stamp? Yes, okay, do my friends see a destination? So uh, address to where this letter is gonna go. Great job, friends. Yes, this is the destination. It doesn't matter if we have this um, address up here. This is always good to put, though, in case uh, the person you're trying to reach does not live at that address anymore. People, the mail carriers can resend your letter back to you, so that way you can eventually get it to the right person. But ultimately, this 
right here this address from the sender does not matter as much as the address to the recipient right here because this again is where our final destination is going to be at so this is extremely important just like the stamp so we have both our requirements met on this envelope so we are going to put this one in the pink section Great job, friends. That was super easy. So now let's look at this one. Where is this one gonna go? Pink, yellow, or blue? Exactly, it's gonna go in the pink, but we need to see if it meets our requirements. So, my friends, what do we see? Yeah, that's right. We see a destination right here, but there's no stamp. So we can't send it. So we gotta put this one back and send it back to our sender. Let's go to the next one. Where is this one gonna go? What color is this one? Great job, friends. This goes in the blue. Now let's see if we have both of our requirements. I see a stamp and I also see an address. Perfect. And also real quick, friends, just as a reminder, our address always has the street number, the street name, and then we have our city, which is right here on this letter, it's Sacramento. Our state, which is California, and then the zip code. And the zip code for Sacramento in this address is 94203. That's just a quick reminder of what goes in an address. And you guys did great. This one does meet both of our requirements. So we are going to put this envelope in the blue section. So this one's gonna get sent off just like the pink one is. So I have this envelope, this color looks blue. Yes, good job, friends. So we're gonna put this one in the blue, but we also need to see if it has our requirements. My friends, do you guys see an address on here or a stamp? Me neither. There is not even a address that we can return to sender. So I don't know what's gonna happen to this envelope, but we cannot send it off because it does not have an address for its destination and it does not have a stamp. So we're gonna put that one back. All right, well, let's do another one. Where is this one gonna go? That's right, friends, this is gonna go in the yellow, but let's see if it meets our requirements. So do you guys see, do you guys see an address and a stamp? I do too, all righty. So this one's going to Miami, Florida. That's a long way. Do you guys think this is gonna travel by van or by truck? Maybe by truck, I think so too, because it can hold a lot more mail and trucks travel to farther places. So I think this is gonna go on a truck, but we're gonna put this, we're gonna sort it into our yellow section. You guys are great at this. You guys could all become mail carriers, honestly. Um, so thank you. So thank you so much for helping me with that activity, my friends. And now we are going to go back and learn a little bit more about our mail carriers. Welcome back, friends. So I hope you guys learned a lot about how to sort mail. And I hope you guys learned some more vocab words. So the destination is where the letter is going. Uh, the recipient is the person who is going to receive the letter. The sender is the person who sends the letter. And then delivery is what we mail carriers do. So we deliver it, which means we take it from the post office to its destination. But delivering something doesn't just mean from the post office to a destination, right friends? My friends, you guys can deliver breakfast from the kitchen to someone in your house so you can deliver that from the kitchen to another room basically when you deliver something is just taking something from one place to another so now i have a question for you guys have my friends ever seen a mail carrier in your guys's neighborhoods yeah maybe you probably have if not maybe you were at school and so you weren't able to see them because the mail does tend to come at different times during the day maybe you guys weren't home so you couldn't see the mail carrier and a lot of the times the mail comes in the morning or where i live it comes in the early afternoon so if i'm not home in the early afternoon i won't see my mail carrier but if you have you may have seen the things that they wear or the things that they need so for example a mail carrier needs this mail truck right here because they have to right here in this back space they have to hold all the mail that they need to that they need to deliver to the neighborhood would they be able to deliver a bunch of mail if they had like a bike my friends i don't think so no huh because you have to hold a lot of mail in this truck this is going to go to a lot of people and some people have big packages 
like this box. This wouldn't fit in a bicycle, right? So mail carriers need big mail vans like this to carry their mail around town. Our mail carriers also need a uniform. So I'll show you guys a picture right here of what a mail carrier uniform looks like. So basically friends, like any job, you do need a uniform, but this is just what the special uniform for our US Postal Service looks like. And if you ever see someone wearing these clothes, that's how you know that they're a mailman and that they're working and delivering all of the mail. Lastly, my friends, a mail carrier does need a mail bag. So if they need to make deliveries in an apartment complex, for example, they can't exactly take this truck into the apartment complex. You know what I mean, friends? It's a little too big. And this also goes on the road, not on the sidewalk. So they can put all the mail they need in their mail bag and then they can go walk over to the mailboxes and then put them all in. And then it saves them trips from the truck to the mailboxes. And it just makes their job more efficient, which means they're able to do it faster and better. All right, my friends, I hope you guys had fun becoming mail carriers with me in the little sorting activity we did. And I hope you guys enjoyed learning a lot about the journey that mail takes from your mailbox to its final destination. And if you guys did really enjoy the activity with me when you became a mail carrier by sorting the mail, you guys can do more on that and become mail carriers again in dramatic play. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, that you learned a lot, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, friends!